Okay, let's talk tornadoes. Those swirling, destructive columns of wind that seem to come out of nowhere and can turn the world upside down, they're a bit terrifying, right? But understanding them takes away some of the fear and helps a lot with being prepared. So what exactly is a tornado? Basically, it's a super powerful rotating column of air. They reach down from a thunderstorm all the way to the ground. Picture an invisible sideways spinning tube in a storm cloud, and then something triggers part of it to dip down and start spinning faster and faster. Most tornadoes have winds under 110 miles per hour, but really strong ones can pack winds over 200 miles per hour. That's strong enough to toss cars like toys, not something you want to mess around with. Where do these things even happen? Tornadoes can appear pretty much anywhere that has thunderstorms, but some parts of the world are way more prone to them. The United States, especially the area called Tornado Alley in the Great Plains, gets more twisters than anywhere else on Earth. But why? It's all about the conditions. You need warm, moist air near the ground and cooler air above it. The clash of those air masses creates instability in the atmosphere. And then you need something called wind shear. That means winds at different altitudes blowing in different directions and at different speeds. This creates that spinning motion in the storm clouds, and sometimes that spin gets super focused, gets violent, and reaches down to become a tornado. Okay, scary part over, let's talk safety. Forecasting has gotten way better in recent years, but tornadoes can still pop up quickly. So it's about knowing what to do if you get a warning. The absolute safest place is underground, like a basement or storm cellar. If you don't have that, find a small, windowless room in the lowest part of a sturdy building and get as low to the ground as possible. Put as many walls between you and the outside as possible. Ditch those old myths about opening your windows to equalize pressure. That's nonsense and waste precious time. And if you're driving and see a tornado, definitely don't try to outrun it. That's incredibly dangerous. If it's far away, try to drive at a right angle away from its path. If it's getting close, leave your car immediately and find a low-lying ditch or culvert to crouch in and cover your head. Here's the thing, a lot of tornado preparation happens way before any warnings go off. Having an emergency plan with your family is huge. Make sure everyone knows where the safe places are in your home. School, workplace, everywhere you spend a lot of time. Have an emergency kit ready to grab. We're talking bottled water, non-perishable food, a flashlight, extra batteries, a first aid kit. The basics you'd need if the power goes out and you're stuck for a while. And have a plan for how you'll get and share information. Will everyone have a charged cell phone, a battery-powered radio, a meeting place if you get separated? And pay attention to the weather. Know the difference between a watch and a warning. A watch means conditions are right for tornadoes to form. So be aware of changing conditions and keep an eye on the news and storm radar. A warning means a tornado's been spotted or it's imminent. That's when you take shelter immediately and stop what you're doing. Now let's get a little nerdy. Why do some thunderstorms spawn tornadoes and others don't? Scientists are still working that out. But there are a few types of twisters they've identified. Most tornadoes come from those classic massive thunderstorms called supercells. Supercells have a special rotating area within them called a mesocyclone. And that's where the tornado magic usually happens. You also get weaker tornadoes called landspouts which look kind of similar but form differently. And terrifyingly, sometimes hurricanes can have tornadoes embedded in them. Yikes, we're only just starting to understand all these storm variations. One cool thing, we measure tornadoes on something called the Enhanced Fujita Scale. It goes from EFO, which is still pretty destructive, all the way up to EF5, which is basically apocalyptic level damage. The good news is, most tornadoes are on the weaker end of the scale. Those monstrous ones you see on the news, those are rare, thankfully. So, why do tornadoes stop? Usually, it's when the inflow of warm air that fuels them gets cut off. Sometimes this is from colder air getting sucked into the storm. Or the tornado can kind of choke itself off. Its own rotation causes something called outflow, which disrupts the process and weakens its source of energy. You know those pictures where you see a tornado, and it's got that almost rope-like shape near the end? That's called the rope out stage, it's basically dying at that point. Kind of a relief to see, honestly. We may never fully control tornadoes. That's the power of nature. But respecting that power, understanding a bit about how they work, and most importantly, knowing how to protect ourselves if one comes our way, that's our superpower.